Hi everyone, Tanji here and today I'll be joining you throughout this video because I kinda owe you for posting a fake tutorial last April 1st and I'm so sorry for that <laughs> but I hope no one actually tried that because if you did and for those who don't know, I'll be posting the link below Anyway, the original plan to this build is to actually build a big wooden pot for that huge flower but that thing is really big and I already used over 30 or 40 of that hot spring walls and I'm afraid that I just used up all the load by just building walls around it and I don't want that. Thankfully, the final build kinda looked like a wrecked wooden pot due to the overgrown flower or something like that and I like how it turns out nonetheless. Alright, let's have a quick tour of Evergreen Hideaway. Okay, so upon entering the treehouse, you'll be greeted by this long table with ornaments on it. It kind of represents the living space of this house. And on your left is the kitchen and also the food supply storage. This is where you cook all the yummies. The yummies? <laughs> what, what am I saying? Okay, so moving on to your right is the dining space. And you have there a table for a four and a tea making area or whatever you want it to be. Uh, this is a very nice spot to start your day because it has a nice view of the lovely outdoors. Alright, so this makeshift ladder, which is made from the shell shelves, shell, shell shelves, <laughs> leads to a solitary study room. Okay, so this room's perfect if you want a quiet time alone to concentrate and focus on whatever you're studying. Introverts like me could actually stay here for weeks. Just give me food and internet, okay? Okay, so outside of that room is a deck and if you want to take a break or a breath of fresh air, you could actually sit on one of the area there. Also, don't mind those bunch of cargoes, I just used it to conceal the awkward gap from the wall and deck. But I also love putting it there because it kinda makes the place realistic because we sometimes dump our stuffs to hidden areas or below the stairs like this one, right? <laughs> okay, so uh, going back down, we have to go under the study room and you also have there your freshly grown tomatoes. So uh, this one leads to your deck garden. You have here different kind of plants and flowers and I used that vegetable rack as a planter and I floated different plants over the veggies to hide it and you also got there an outdoor table to hang out or daydream if you want and I don't know how that cart end up there I just left putting flowers over it and it kind of completes the overall garden aesthetics okay so moving on to the second level you have here all the weaponries like bows swords spears and everything you need to defend yourself and also this is the deck to dry your things, like your clothes, but on this case, we're currently <laughs> drying fish. <laughs> okay, and lastly, my favorite space, this is the sleeping slash workshop room. Before you enter, you have this little balcony that faces where the sun rises and a very nice view as well. As you enter the room, you have here the ongoing works. You have like this rug and other crafts you made on that corner. You also have here your crafting table, and above it is the storage space made of crates. Then here is the study space with a long table to fit all your books and stuff. And the best part here is the huge window where you get a good look of the neighboring island. And also this one's got a spectacular view of the sea of clouds. I mean, look at that. I really love the color of afternoon sun and it makes me feel a bit nostalgic and all. <laughs> I don't know, personally, most of the memorable things happen to me on afternoons. <laughs> Maybe that's why. Anyway, you also have here your bed of leaves. And I don't know, I hope it's comfy enough, but it matches the treehouse aesthetic, right? Uh, I could have used the big crates with cloth, but I don't want to see something protruding below the deck, unlike using this one. It's a bit sunken to level with the bench to sit on, and it doesn't protrude below. See? Very nice. 
Okay, so this spot is also perfect for painting. I really love this furnishing, but I just hope we could change the painting because sometimes it's a bit off to suddenly have Paimon's painting on certain builds that doesn't involve her. <laughs> but that's just me. Um, anyway, uh, that's pretty much it for the tour. Uh, next up is the tutorial. Alright, so we are building in the Reverie Realm. First off is the main structure, which is the Mansion Pagoda. Uh, first is putting up the entry stairs. The second stairs height should be at 3.2 or should be leveled with the base deck of the Pagoda. Okay, so next up is one of the arduous part of the build and it is putting up these hot spring walls all over the structure. And if you look closely, the deck is not a perfect curve and it has multiple edges like that of a polygon and I just use it as a guide while I float these walls. That gap by the way is, the, is for the window and is equivalent to one wall. Oh, by the way, this is a reverse retrieve video because I don't have a lot of memory in my laptop to save and backup everything. Just so you know guys, recording an actual building process lasts for hours and hours of trial and errors, <laughs> conceptualizing the build, so imagine the file size of the video afterwards. It's unpractically large. Even though you thought of how the build should look like, the execution is a completely different scenario. So most teapot creators do the reverse retrieve method and what I actually did before is create the build first then I redo everything for recording purposes but I don't have that luxury of time now sadly. So yeah, alright enough chit chat, <laughs> let's proceed with the build. Okay, so at the second level deck, I decided to have something like a low railing just to give a sense of enclosement of the area, but of course, that's absolutely not safe for kids. Though, um, walking around the treehouse is never safe to begin with, yeah? <laughs> okay, so uh, for the wooden stairs, uh, they are slightly curved, and I started from the top, so the stair angle is precise with the second level deck, then I work my way down. I used the curved treetop stroll platform to smoothly transition that awkward overhang back to the first deck. Now, we proceed to decorating the first level, starting with the kitchen. Some of the furnishings here are floated because I don't know why there's a part of the outer edge of this pagoda that does not allow you to place objects, so yeah. Then uh, we have here the display table for ornaments. And the choice of ornaments is completely optional and you can replace it with any furnishing of your liking. Moving on to the dining area. By the way, that big pot is kind of a last minute addition because that area is a bit awkward and empty. Okay, so now with that shelf ladder, I actually started from the top all the way down as well. Now we start putting planters to the windows which also serves as seal height for the opening. Don't forget the lights, okay? Then here we used a bamboo fence for the front door. Now that everything has been carefully placed, we then proceed on putting a canopy slash deck for mezzanine level. Okay, so this is also to close that window gap and will protect you from rain and sun, alright? Okay, so moving on, this wood platform leads to that secret study room and the floors will also be made from these platforms. And I don't want to use the pine table because the table legs might look awkward below and especially that we use that as a passage to the rest of the treehouse. Okay, so this is where we left earlier. I'm just putting railings 
for safety and <laughs> I used mushrooms as our access to climb up the stair landing and that first mushroom step is also floated. Then we add here additional railings. I didn't put another set on the other side because I want to make it look unfinished kind of and that other side is where we could sit on one of the edge so yeah and don't forget the cargo. Oh by the way that was the gap that I was trying to say earlier. Okay, so going back to the secret room, I used the Inazuman workshop house because it blends in perfectly with the build and I still floated this one despite having those platforms but the good thing is almost everything that is inside is not floated except for that crate that I used as a table that I lowered down a bit as well and also the book above it are floated. By the way, those books came from a set, so I recommend that you get it from the set first before you start building to make sure you still have enough load to place the set. I also added vegetations around it so it looks a bit lively. Okay, so moving on to the garden area, I placed a light under the shrooms and that is not floated. It's the actual height of the Otogi lamp. Then I place this pottery wheel here just to break the space from the garden to the kitchen. Then I'm just laying additional garden stuffs like the cart with the floated flowers and this vegetable rack that I shifted to be a planter shelf or something. And a nice round table for your afternoon tea. Now that everything's looking nice and cozy, let's go ahead and proceed to the second level deck. Okay, so first off, I placed this kuihu, ku, <laughs> kuih, kuihua. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I placed this kuihua sapling at the middle because, trust me, this deck looks scorching hot without a tree as the shade. By the way, I love using this tree because it's load friendly. Okay, so this second level is supposed to be the weaponry slash drying area, so I placed all this crates and weapons in here at the shady part then all the things that needs to be dried will be placed at the edge of the deck and again uh, some of these are floated because furnishings turns red on certain areas especially near the edge and also I added this lush grapevine to fill in this awkward space here okay so now that everything's fixed at the second deck we can now proceed building the last room which is my favorite space Okay, so like last time, we just have to follow the edges around the deck as we lay down the walls, but this time, the walls will be mounted over the deck. Uh, take note that the larger window is equivalent to two walls, while the smaller one is equivalent to one. By the way, these are all folded, even if they're placed over the deck. Just follow the remaining wall placements, like so. The bamboo fan surprisingly fits perfectly at the opening but we have to angle it like it is open for us to be able to access the room. Now let's start decorating the room. Kindly follow the placements of the furnishings like so. And if the furnishing turns red in certain areas that means you really have to float it. <laughs> okay? Oh, by the way the, the bed is made from two overlap leaf table or whatever that is <laughs> because it felt like one of that is not enough to hold a person. Like what I said earlier, uh, the bed is sunken a bit to level with the bench. Okay, so from here, I'm just adding additional accessories to fill the room. And I don't want the windows to be too big like those windows at the first deck. That's why I added these crates above the openings. And it doesn't have to be precise, just follow the curve. Alright? Just adding the last touches for the walls and we're almost done. I just used this smaller pavement as the roof so we could follow the curve of the room and again it, it doesn't have to be very precise just avoid overlapping it too much to minimize those uh, blinking spots below. I also added some vegetations above the roof to make it look like there are plants growing above it because the stone roof looks a bit plain and heavy above the wooden structure. Okay, so the next steps are mostly vegetations and accessories outside, so just follow it from here.
and it's done. You now have your very own treehouse. You can bring your friends in here, or you can just enjoy your sweet time alone. This is honestly my new favorite build because you can do more things like cooking, crafting, create an ikebana of your own, and more interactive areas unlike my <coughs> previous builds. <laughs> Anyway, uh, thank you for staying till the end of this video. I very much appreciate your company. If you wanted to see more Serenity bot builds like this one, consider subscribing to my channel and also I am very open for suggestions, so don't hesitate to comment down below. Or you can also reach me on my Discord. Until next time, bye everyone!